patience of the church today. I love my church. Learning to care for one another, the practice of the church. The practice of the church. What are we? We are the church. All right? And then Sunday night, we looked at we were the proof of the church. And then last week, we looked at what was Sunday morning. Oh, boy. Anybody know what last Sunday was? I'm going to have to be like that preacher where preached the same message for six weeks. And the deacons came to him wanting to know, you're such a good preacher, and we really like your preaching and love you, but we're kind of concerned because you've been preaching the same message for six weeks. Is there something wrong? And he said, nothing at all. And then why are we listening? He said, because you haven't got it yet. All right, last Sunday we looked at what? Huh? What was Sunday night last Sunday night? Accept one another. Thank you, Brother David. Wonderful. So we looked at we are the church. We looked at the proof of the church. Then if we're the proof of the church, then we forgive one another. Then we accept one another. Amen? So now this morning we're going to look at the fact of the practice of the church. See, we got to put the church to practice. We need to practice the church in our lives and every day. And that has to do with serving one another. Let me draw your attention to 1 Peter 4.10. You want to take your Bibles and open to 1 Peter 4.10. We'll be looking at other passages of Scripture this morning as we begin our uh, continuing our uh, series on I Love My Church. And this morning we want to put the church to practice. And if we're going to practice the church, then we need to serve one another. Okay? As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Every one of us has been given the grace of God. We've been given the gifts of the grace of God. And we're to use those gifts in ministering and serving one another. And so that's what the scripture tells us. God has given each of you and I a gift. And it's a variety of spiritual gifts. And we're to use them in the body of Christ to serve one another. And not only do we serve one another in the body of Christ, we have to take it outside the four walls of this church and serve the community in reaching our world for Christ. And we all have a responsibility to that. See, we can say we're the church, but are we practicing the church? Church has a responsibility. That's, okay, the verbs, the doing that's the obeying, you see, and so we have to do that. So we're going to take a look at that this morning as we go through it. I think you'll enjoy it and have fun. Let's pray. Our Father, we do thank you for today. Thank you for your wonderful blessings and your gifts that you have given to us. Thank you that the Holy Spirit has chosen to give us all special gifts. And wow, what a privilege and what an honor to have these gifts bestowed upon us by the Spirit of God. Gifts that we do not deserve, gifts we've done nothing to earn or to merit, but yet they are freely, willingly given to us by the Holy Spirit. And Lord, it's good that we don't go choosing them. God gives them to us as He wills. And Lord, we thank You for it. ask You to bless our time in Your Word now. Your Holy Spirit would come and be our teacher and our guide. He would give us illumination, understanding of the Scriptures, and then above all, give us wisdom to apply what we learn. And Lord, that we put it to practice in our lives because the church has an awesome responsibility. And Father, we need to be about that, practicing what the Scriptures teaches us. And so Lord, bless our time in your word. Thank you for the music. Thank you for our musicians that play for us. Lord, be with our folks that are sick, that are not feeling well today, cannot be with us. And Father, again, one of our exhortations from our brother Paul last night out of Romans was to be a love is prayerful. Father, it's to be instant and consistent. And instant implies there is a matter at hand. And Father, we have a matter at hand today in our family. And we'd ask, Lord, that you would intervene on behalf 
Father, we truly deserve everything we get. But we thank you for the trials, and we ask for your mercy. Thou, Son of David, have mercy on my wife, Carol. Now, Father, we need your help to preach your word today. Ask for your filling now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, right off the bat, if we're going to practice serving one another, I want you to know that you were born again to serve. You were born again to serve. God did just, just save you to save you. It's like it says He didn't have nothing else to do. Okay? God saved you and I to serve. That's biblical and that's scriptural throughout all, especially the New Testament teaching. You see, when I got saved, God saved me to serve Him. If, I, if He didn't want me to serve Him, then He should have just taken me home when I got saved. And He should have taken you home the moment you got saved. But we'd have a problem then, wouldn't we? Because, you see, if God took everybody home that got saved, who'd be left to tell others to get saved? And then who would be left to tell them to get saved? Matter of fact, we wouldn't have anybody because the first person got saved, they're gone, and that's it. Who else is going to tell people to get saved, you see? So that's why God keeps us around. We're here to serve Him. And uh, that's why you were born again. That's what we call justification. You were saved. You were born again. You were justified. You were just as if you never sinned. That's the easiest way to put it. But in more, a little more in depth, it means because I am saved and born again, because God justified me, I stand today before God righteous. We stand today before Almighty God righteous. And it's not my righteousness, but it's Christ's righteousness that has been imputed in, unto me. That God hath clothed me, if you please, in Christ's righteousness. Because I have no righteousness. My righteousness is as filthy rags, the Scripture said. And it's not by my righteousness that He has saved me, but by His righteousness. And so I am justified. So because God has saved me, justified Justified me. He wants me to serve Him. That's our purpose on being on this planet. And that's what we call sanctification. The second part of your salvation. God just didn't save you and make you righteous. He saved us and made us righteous for a purpose. And that was to serve Him and to serve the church. That's what we call sanctification. Now that act took place the moment you got justified. The moment you got justification and saved, you got the might we could say the first part of your sanctification. God sanctified you. He set you apart unto service for Him. Amen. That's what sanctification is. So when God saved me and I got born again, I got justified. And God says, now I need Him to serve me, so I'm going to set Him apart unto me for service. I'm going to set him apart from, from the world unto, unto holiness. I'm going to set him apart from sin unto holiness. I'm going to set him apart to serve me. And by the way, serve me and me only. That's who I'm to be serving is God and God only. He saved me. He justified me. He sanctified me. And he says, I want you to serve me. And if I'm going to be a part of the church, because we are the church, and the church is the body of Christ, the church is the family of God, the church is the bride of Christ, Jesus is the foundation of the church, Jesus is the head of the church, Jesus is the church. Amen? And so therefore, of church, we need to serve him because I've been saved and born again. And so we praise God for that. So let's take a look at four wonderful little truths this morning uh, under this thing of being born again to serve. Say that with me. I'm born again to serve. Let's say it again. I'm born again to serve. See, if God didn't want us to serve, He might as well take us home. All right, so first of all, I want you to know God created you to serve. Did you know that? God created you to serve. Ephesians 2.10. 
For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. God prepared them before you were even born. God prepared for you and I uh, unto good works. We are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works uh, that God has already done that we should walk in them. Ephesians also tells us. So I was born to serve because God created me to serve. And not just me, folks. He created you to serve. Every person in here that's saved, God created you and I to serve. And since we're a part of the church, and just because you may not be a, quote, let's say, a bonafide member of this church, you haven't joined this church. You're still a member of the church. You're a member of the body of Christ. You're a member of the family of God. See, you're a member of what we can want to, the universal church. Because you see, there's a lot of churches that belong to the Lord Jesus that are meeting all around the globe this morning. And they're part of the body of Christ. They are our brothers and sisters in Christ. And they too were born again. They too were saved and they too were created to serve God. And so that's what we need to be doing if we're going to put the church to practice. If we're not, then we're not being obedient to the scriptures. We're not practicing the church. I mean, folks, I'm, I'm not being harsh on anyone. I'm just telling you the truth. That's all. Matter of fact, so if I was born to serve, again, I was created to serve. I want you to know, secondly, I, God equips me to serve. God equips me to serve. Philippians 2.13 tells me this, For it is God, for it is who? It is God that worketh in you. See, it's not you, it's God working in you. And what is He doing? Both to will and to do of His good pleasure. See, it is God. It's in, that, in other words, that means God is created. I was born again. God created me to serve Him. God equipped me to serve Him, you see. And therefore, uh, He wills both for me to do. And the will means to desire. Uh, to do is the power uh, to literally please Him. See, God got me born again. God got me saved. I didn't have anything to do with it. And when He saved me, He justified me. When he saved me, he sanctified me. And he said, I'm going to set you apart to serve me. And he doesn't say, is that okay with you? Or God doesn't say, well, let's make a deal. No. God saved me to serve him. And you see, God's never going to ask us to serve us if he doesn't equip us. God will never ask you and I to ever do anything that He first doesn't equip us to do it. To give us the ability, the power, the talent, the gifts that we're talking about to do His will, to please Him. That's why we do this. God wants the church. God wants us to please Him. And so God has created us to serve Him. God has created us to please Him. And I want to please Him, and I know you do too. And so that's why I'm glad I'm so part of this great organization called the church. That's why I'm glad I'm a member of the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, uh, the family of God. Oh, man, it's just fantastic. Uh, and, and what a privilege it is, church. What an honor it is to serve the living God. You've got to look at it that way, you see. Not only did God equip me, but God uniquely designed the special work that he wants me to do. Every one of us has a job to do in the family of God and in the body of Christ. And God has called us all to serve Him. And God then has equipped all of us to serve Him. Then God has taken us as individuals and has designed the very plan, the very work that He wants you to do that He can't do. And He's designed a specific plan and job for Him to do that you can't do. So in order to get this done and this done, he's equipped both of you, saved both of you, called both of you, you see, created both of you, equipped both of you, and gave you all a job to do. God uniquely designs work for me through the spiritual gifts that the Spirit of God gives us. I listed just a few of them there for you. There are speaking gifts. There are serving gifts. There are encouraging gifts. There are gifts of giving, gifts of leading, gift of mercy, gift of kindness. These are all listed in the book of Romans. 
All right, Paul deals quite a bit with the gifts in Romans chapter 12. And, and, but if you really want to get into it, all of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, everybody likes to say, well, there's the love chapter in the Bible. Yes, it is. But did you know love's a gift? Amen. And if you study the book of 1 Corinthians 13, it's about spiritual gifts. Chapter 14 is about spiritual gifts. Chapter 12 is about spiritual gifts. Chapter 13 is about spiritual gifts. Chapter 14 is about spiritual gifts. The Apostle Paul took three whole chapters in 1 Corinthians to teach us and tell us about the special gifts that God, by this Holy Spirit, has equipped you and I so that we can do what we were created to do, and that is to serve Him. And that's what the church needs to be about doing. It's not just the pastor that's being to do serving. Or the, uh, you see, we had four wonderful ladies that did a beautiful job on our fellowship hall. You know what they have? They have the gift of serving. Amen. You know what they did? They served. They did the job that God had designed them to do. And they did it well. Amen. Amen? Praise the Lord. And so everybody's got a job to do. You see, we got folks that can play pianos and instruments. God gave them gifts and abilities to do that. So they could serve the body of Christ and serve the Lord and minister to one another. God gave some of you gifts to usher and to deacon, deacons and, 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 and treasurers and you know, whatever else. You know, all of that stuff. Sound people, camera people. God gives everybody a gift. Amen. So, how many of you were born again? Amen. Well, some of you were. <laughs> how many of you were born again? Everybody been born again? Well... I'll let that go between you and God. I don't have a problem testifying to it. I was born to serve. God created me to serve. God equipped me to serve. God designed a special job for me to do. Listen to what the Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 12. There in your study notes there, you can look at it in your Bible. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministry. Or he that teacheth on teaching. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it uh, with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. And he that soweth mercy with cheerfulness. That's just some of the list that God has equipped us and given to us to do. So, I was born to serve. I was created to serve. I was equipped to serve. God designed a job, specific job for me to do, to serve. But then God, here's the one I like, God fulfills you and I when we serve. God fulfills me when I serve. Listen to Philippians 2.17. Yea, Paul's talking here now to the church of Philippi. He says, if I be offered up the sacrifice. In other words, if, even if I lose my life, he says here. Uh, for the service and service of your faith. In other words, your faith is an offering to God. And so what is the results of that? What fulfills me in that offering? Joy. Isn't that what he said? Look what he says. I joy and I rejoice with you all. You see, God fulfills you and I when we serve him with joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Paul said, even if I offer my life up, lose my life as a sacrifice, your offering of your faithfulness unto the Lord, the results is God fulfills you and I with joy. And I believe Peter takes it a little bit further. Joy here and unspeakable and full of glory. So you see, we're going to be filled with joy. We're going to have joy unspeakable, full of glory when we're fulfilling the design job that God equipped us to do that we were created to do because we've been born again. Amen. See how it all goes together? Fits in perfectly. And I'll tell you, there's nothing more satisfying when you're serving Christ and you know it and it's just something it does for you. There is that fulfillment. That's why Jesus over and over so many times said, blessed, blessed. Now some want to say blessed and some want to say blessed. It's spelled the same word. But it's going to be, depends on how you're using it in the content and in the context, all right? But it doesn't matter. Blessed is the man. Blessed is the woman. Or blessed is the man. Blessed is the one. The word means, simply means to be happy or fully satisfied. You and I are going to be happy campers. We're going to be fully satisfied campers. When we are fulfilling the destiny that God has for us in serving Him. So I love my church because I'm trying to learn to care for one another. 
And how we care for one another is practice serving one another. We need to be serving one another. All right, let's look at a second truth we find here. Everybody with me for a second one? By the way, now serving looks different for each person. Remember we talked about the other night that we accept one another because we're all different? Last Sunday night, we're all different. And so serving looks different for each person. Now, it's interesting that serving here in the Greek, if you want to get into it, it basically is described in two ways. There are those that wait on tables. We call that, most often, we call that ministry. That's basically an act of service in love. You see, that's what they did in the book of Acts, if you remember. The widows were being neglected, and they were not getting in on the Lord's Supper and the meat and all that they were doing and that kind of thing. And so they came to the apostles and, and the leaders, and the leaders came to the apostles and said, hey, the widows are being neglected in this area of this, and we need to do something about it. So the apostles said, I'll tell you what we're going to do then. We're going to, we want you to look out from among you. See, they put the responsibility on the, on the church. You look out from among you, men of good and honest report, and check you some, and then put them over these responsibilities of serving tables to the widows, while we apostles give ourselves in time to the reading and the teaching and the studying and the fasting and prayer of the Word of God. And that's where deacons came in. And the word deacon, or deacon means to serve, one who stir, serves, not one who's in authority, not one who's in place of rule or authority. That's given to the office of pastor. Deacons is an office of serving, and God created them, and they were born again, created them to serve, okay. Uh, he, uh, when He did that, He equipped them to serve, and then therefore the design service He designed for them were to be deacons. So they can serve the church and serve the body of Christ. They have the same qualifications that a pastor has except for one. I have nine, they have eight. We all have the same. Our deacons here have the same qualifications that I'm to have, except God gave me one more. Doesn't mean that I'm better, greater, or anything. No, it's just the office I hold. And when this office that God has given me, the one extra, one extra, the number nine that I got was a place of rule, of having authority. That was not given to the deacons. Hello? I'm glad some of you are with me. So, serving looks different for each of us. So, there are those that are going to wait on tables. There are those that are going to minister. There's the act of service that they do in love. And then the next one is that of helping. As helping or aiding in love with the community. The community of believers within the church and without the church. We're to go out with it and to serve. Well, See, help these two gifts here, or these two positions here uh, that are given to us, these two areas of service, are to energize the church and then to free up the church to go out of the church and do what God's called us to do. Amen. So see, everybody has a different gift. Amen. All of our serving looks different. Right. Okay, so we need to understand that. So serving is my unique way of contributing. Right. You see, it's your unique way to contributing to the body of Christ, to the family of God, to the cause of Christ, to the work of Christ. It's your way of contributing. It's not difficult by the fact that Paul said in 1 Corinthians 12, 5, and there are differences of administrations or differences of ministries, but the same Lord. See, we're all under the same Lord. But we have different gifts, we have different assignments, we have different jobs, we have different positions, but it's all under the Lord, Amen. you see. And so there's how we do our, so unique is serve. So when you serve, you're contributing. That's your part of contributing to the body of Christ, to the work of Christ, the cause of Christ. Folks, if we don't, we're not going to get the job done. Never get done with just one person. Uh, yeah, we were on television, yes. We're on 17 hours a week. 17 hours a week. 
Can I get somebody to praise God? Where's my sign at church the other night? All right, where's my book? Where's my sign? This is my sign I got from Walmart, okay? I don't have it, but I'm going to get one. I like it. Walmart's got a little sign about this big that a lady painted up, and it says, Can I get an amen? So if you want to get to Walmart, go get me one. If not, I'm going to go get one, all right? Because sometimes I think I need to bring it out. Okay? <laughs> amen? You see, we, we can't get it all done. Let's see, just like uh, uh, 17 hours a week out on the television. We're an hour a week out on the radio. We're, we're 24 hours a day, seven days a week on YouTube around the world, nationally, internationally. Our website is 24 hours a day, seven days a week, internationally, nationally, around the world on our website. Our Facebook has gone worldwide, uh, internationally, and nationally, on our Facebook. What are we doing? We're contributing when we do our part of reaching our world for Christ. You see, isn't that fantastic? Last night at 11 o'clock when it went out over WACTX WACX in Orlando, Super Channel 55, and it went out to all of its repeating sister stations, we covered over 8 million homes just in Central Florida last night. Now that was off of the station, okay? And the subsister stations. So we cover from the Atlantic Ocean to the Gulf of Mexico. We cover from way down south of Orlando to just north of uh, Gainesville. That's just on that one alone. But when that's going on, the television station is live streaming that program around the world. So we are going into all the world and preaching the Yuan Gileon, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What is the gospel? It is the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Then what is the good news of that gospel? Salvation. Where a man and woman can be born again. And when they're born again, they're born to serve. Oh, can't get away from it, can we? Amen and praise God. So we have this unique way of, of contributing. All right, so we're looking at serve, uh, serving differs with each person. So you may have the gift of waiting on tables, service that's done in love. You may have the gift of helping or aiding uh, to help energize the church uh, to go out, all right? Then you, may, uh, then, then you have this unique way of contributing. Then serving overflows with thanksgiving to God. Serving will overflow with thanksgiving uh, to God. Listen to what it says. Whiles, we're reading in 1 Corinthians 9, 13 now. Whiles by the experiment of this ministration, that is of the service is what he's talking about, uh, they glorify God on your professed subjection unto the gospel. See, because of your service, you have proved worthy of the gospel of Christ, and as a result, it has overflowed, causing people to glorify God. You see, it's not about us, church. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, your good service, your good contributing to the body of Christ, that they may glorify your Father which is in heaven. And so we praise God. So you see, when we serve, it literally overflows with thanksgiving to God. Not only from within the community, but outside the community. When Jesus said, let your light so shine before men, the word men there in humanity represents the cosmos, the world of all humanity. Why? So that all of mankind can glorify God because they see your acts of service being done in love with, for the Lord. And that brings glory to God. Do you know what? And I don't think God says this. It's just me talking, all right, just for a moment here. But whether a person gets saved or not, God still wants the glory. God wants the glory from every person that's born on the planet of the earth. And what a joy that you and I could serve and be a part of this and cause people to glorify God, even if they're not saved. Plenty of examples in the Old Testament. King Nebuchadnezzar. You remember him with the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You remember him with Daniel in the lion's den. Oh, Daniel, thy God. See, Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar didn't say his God. He said, Daniel, thy God, whom you serve, is able to deliver you. And the next day, Daniel said, hey, I had the best sleep in all the night. King, no problem. I'm fine. Everything's just fine. See, it caused a lost Gentile king of the Babylonian Empire to give God the glory. 
And you remember what happened to him? He had to go out and eat grass. Got grew feathers. Now don't any of you come over here and eat grass and start growing feathers, all right? Please. And claws. Man, I bet he looked like a creature, didn't he? Probably looked like some of these Hollywood pictures we see of eagle-type men flying with feathers, you know, and claws. But boy, when he got in his right mind and recognized who God was, whoo, things happen. Now look at here. The, 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 the fourth truth in this serving looks different for each of us. Serving is always to be for Christ. Knowing that the Lord, ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. You see, serving is not for me. Serving is not for this building and the body ship. Serving in, in total reality is for Christ. You know why? Because that's what I was born again to do. That's what God created me to do. That's what He equipped me to do. That's what He designed me to do. You know what God designed me to do before I was in my mother's womb? You know how I know that? Because He tells me, I knew you before in your mother's womb. That's why it's a living baby. You need to quit killing it. God says, I knew them in their womb before they were even born. And the first person to ever recognize that Jesus Christ was coming on the scene to be born of Mary of the Virgin was Elizabeth's child, Don the Baptist, because when he heard it announced in his mother's womb, he leaped for joy. Hallelujah. This nonsense needs to stop killing the babies. Killing them right up to the day of their birth. That's cold-blooded murder. If you don't reverse that thing and change it right now, and all you other governors in these states that are following this nonsense in this stuff, you'd better stop it. You better cut it out because you are the leader of that country or state or whatever county, and God will hold you accountable for the decisions that you make. And I'm telling you, you will invoke the wrath of God Almighty. You're not going to get away with it. What has happened to America that we want to kill the unborn? You better be thankful. The only reason why you're a governor or a whatever else, a congressman or a senator or whatever else, is because your mother didn't abort you. Amen. Go ahead. Give God a praise in the house. He deserves it. <laughs> now, I have compassion for you ladies that have had abortions. Trust me. I'm sorry that that happened. Sorry you went through that emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually. Sorry that maybe somebody gave you wrong counsel. Sorry that maybe you're feeling today that you've committed some kind of horrible, gross sin that, that God cannot forgive. I want to tell you something, dear lady, dear sweet lady, no matter how old you are or what has happened, God will forgive you. He will cleanse you. He will wash you. He will make you pure. He will pardon it. He will never remember it again against you. And you can have a happy life in Christ. And that baby's in glory. Don't you worry about it. Hallelujah. You've got to write these congressmen and senators. And all right, we're going to get political a little bit here. That's all right. Amen? Daniel was political. Daniel was a statesman for Babylon. He was high up in the political realm. But he was also a prophet of God. Hallelujah. Stop this murder. You want to get America out from under the judgment of God? Stop it and watch what happens. But we are under the judgment of God right now. Don't kid yourself. You don't murder 54 million babies and get away with it. And you're not going to get away with it now. Can you imagine that? Heartbeat starts at 18 days. Somebody better protect the unborn. The devil is selling a Mickey lie to all these girls and women. A total lie that this is what they need to do going to be an inconvenience in their life. It's going to burden them. And oh, it's going to wreck up. No, no, no. Yes, you may have went out and got pregnant in sin and immorality. And that's okay. I'm not saying it's okay to go sin. That's the consequences of your sin. But that child is a blessing of the Lord. Why not give it a chance? 
How many doctors and lawyers and scientists and inventors and, and presidents and all have we, have we killed and murdered that could have turned this country around and done something great because of it? Now we got a bunch of morons. Don't let me start on that list in Washington. Cuckoo, cuckoo. That's what they ought to have going across the bottom on the ticker tapes. When some of them get up to speak and they look like a couple of pair of puppets anyway. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Da, 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 do, do. Pray for them. You know why? They need to be born again. And God will change their thinking and realize what's happening and what's going on. I am so grateful today and thankful that my mother did not abort me or I would not be doing what I'm doing. Because God had a plan and a design for me in my mother's womb. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Serving is not. Let's look what serving is not real quickly. Serving is not about who gets the credit. Hello. This is the big one. we got to get straightened out. Serving is not about who gets the credit. Amen. And we did not honor these ladies this morning. The Bible says, give honor to whom honor is due. They didn't ask me to do that. They don't want their names in the bulletin. None of them came to me and said, make sure that my picture and name is on the page like this. Because I want everybody to know what I did. You don't find their name in there. We just have a big thank you for all who helped. None of our ladies or men around here seek any praise or credit for anything. It's one of the most greatest group of people I have ever worked with. It's not about them or anything they do. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. Most of the time they get mad if I do mention them and say, why did you do that? And I said, well, the Bible tells me to give honor to whom honor is due. And it wasn't to praise you. It was to give God the glory, to give God the honor that he used through you. He, you did what you did. Jesus is the one that did it, not you. Amen. Let's give all the credit where it belongs. Okay, it's not about how much we've done or accomplished or created or did or that or that. No, no, all credit goes to the Lord. Serving is not about credit. Or who gets it. That's why there's never any names around here in the bulletins or anything we put in there. And very seldom we just have everybody stand or recognize because we don't want to offend anyone. And we don't want anyone to think that's what we're doing. Because we're not. We love you. And we thank you. And we appreciate you greatly to no end. But let's give all the credit to who it goes to. All right, we gave the ladies a hand, and we welcomed them, we stood them up. Well, now let's give God a praise uh, through what these ladies did, through their gifts that God gave them, created them to do, designed for them to do, called them to do. Let's give God the praise, amen. God gets all the credit. And there's a lot of stuff that goes on around here. You don't have a clue who does it. It's all in the background. They're, they're some of our underground agents. We've got some secret agents here when it comes to serving. Now, don't be a secret agent when it comes to talking about Jesus. There's no silent disciple. Never are we told to be silent. We're to go share our faith. We're to spread the gospel. We're to preach the word. You see, we're to give testimony, so forth. But there's a lot of times, there's a lot of work that goes on. There's giving that goes on you don't even have a clue about. There are people that have given some wonderful contributions to this church. Their name has never been mentioned. There's never even been a hint about where or who we're from. And we don't want anybody going, well, I wonder who gave that, who did not. That's none of your business. That blizzard, that, that, that's between them and God. And I'm the only other one that knows, but there's a few others that know in here. Our secretaries know. Our financial secretary, of course, knows. Our counters knows because if they see it, or whether I still have to give it to them for the records and all that, and they have taken lie detector tests, they have taken DNA tests, they have been under scrutiny of the microscope, they have sworn by oath in blood that there will be no mentioning, no hinting of talking whatsoever. If they do, there is a consequences to pay. Amen. That's where I get to use a little bit of the power. So I tell Carol, I'm going to use the power this afternoon, man. Amen. Folks, don't blow your horn, toot your trumpet, okay? For the administration of this service 
not only supplieth the want of the saints. You see, the service you're doing is supplying the needs to the saints, but is an abundant also by many, watch this, thanksgivings unto God. See, your service is to give God the thanks. Your, the credit goes to God for what you are doing, not what we are doing. All right, and, and, and it's not about the results. Serving is not about the results, yea. And Paul says, if I be offered upon the sacrifice of service, and if you're fa- for your faithful service, I joy and rejoice with you all. You see, it's not the, 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 the results is to share in the joy with each other. The results is about the joy of serving Christ, not about who gets the credit or the praise or the compliments or your name written in neon lights or we can put it on the big screen. I've yet to have anybody say, hey, how about this Sunday putting me up there on the big screen? Picture, let them everybody know what, what I did and how much I did and all that stuff. We don't want to hear that around here. Because everybody's important here. And everybody does what they can. Okay? Guess what else? Serving is not about what I do. Serving is not about what I do. Paul put it this way in 1 Corinthians 12, 11. But all these worketh, that the one and the selfsame Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. That's the Holy Spirit giving the gifts, you see. It's not about what I do. It's about what the Spirit of God does through you and I, of the gifts that He has given to us for the design job that He's given to us, to what I was created for, and what I was equipped for, and why I was born again. Well, that's beautiful how it all goes together. We've got to get a, get a rhyme with this, and we'll get us a song about this, all right? Some of you songwriters write that. Uh, fourthly there, it's not about a burden. Serving is not about a burden. The Apostle Paul says, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of His power. In other words, Paul says it's a privilege in serving God because it was the grace of God that gave me the gift of God, which the Spirit of God gave me the power of God to do what I'm supposed to do. So when you see when it's all there, it's not a burden to serve Christ. Because we're to be serving in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the anointing of the Spirit of God, using the gifts that the Spirit of God has given us, all for the glory of God. How could that be a burden? Man, I'm telling you, it's not a burden. Well, then, if serving is not a burden, what is serving? Glad you got to that. Aha, somebody got it. Not big. I put that big letters for you. Amen? Serving church is a privilege. It's a privilege to serve Christ. It's a privilege to serve the Lord. It's a privilege to serve the church, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, the family of God. This is a privilege. This is an honor to stand in this place. I did not deserve it. I did not ask for it. But I did desire it. For if a man desires the office of a bishop, He desireth a good work. See, the office of bishop is spelled W-O-R-K. Amen? And when God, the Spirit of God, puts that burning desire in your heart, you can't help but do it. Jeremiah, the crying, the weeping prophet, he said, man, I've got a burning in my heart. I have a burning desire within my soul. He said that I I just got to tell somebody. Oh, praise the Lord. So what is serving? It's a privilege. So when you and I serve, we need to serve with enthusiastically. We need to serve enthusiastically. So when you serve, all right, we're looking at serving is a privilege. So when you serve, serve enthusiastically. This is what the Romans, Paul said in Romans 12, 11, Not slothful, not lazy in business, fervent in spirit, doing what, church? Serving the Lord. You've got to serve the Lord with enthusiastic. Don't get lazy, don't get slothful, don't go to sleep. Get some life about you. Serve God enthusiastically. I mean, when you do it, if you're going to do it, you might as well, amen? 
Don't do it grudgingly. Don't do it as a burden. Man, do it with some excitement. Woo, yippee, I'm serving God today. Man, I'm in here cleaning these dirty, smelly toilets today for the church, for the cause of Christ, for the body of Christ, for the testimony of the Lord. And well, I'll tell you what, I want to clean these things with enthusiastic. Get Mr. Scrubbing Bubbles. Squirt that stuff in there. Watch those bubbles go around in that thing. And just, just have a hilarious of a time serving God. We could go on and on, but serve with enthusiastic. Have some enthusiasm about you. Man, we are alive in Christ. Anybody remember those few messages we did? And we started some alive in His grace. Well, if you're alive, then get some enthusiasm about you. Amen. Here's another one real quickly. Serve without complaining. Please, I beg of you in Jesus' name. Serve without complaining. Do all things, our brother Paul tells us in Philippians 2.14. Do how many things? All. What is all, church? All things without murmurings and disputings. And if you want to use two other words for murmurings, complaining, disputings, arguing. Now some of you, I have to, you know, I'm some a little bit. We come out here and we're serving and I'm cruising around and got my radar tuned in. And sometimes I'm walking around, I hear, so that means I know where it's coming from. And oh, we're just complaining about what's going on or what we're doing. You can't serve with enthusiasm if we're complaining, grumbling, arguing. Serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. Serve with a privilege. Quit complaining. It may be too hot. It may be too cold. It may be too windy. It may be too rainy. It may be too many leaves on the floor. Maybe the vacuum cleaner's not working and smelling right. Go get another one. Set it aside. Somebody will fix it. Well, it's freezing in here. Well, put a jacket on. That's how you solve it. It's too hot in here. Then take the coat off, which I'm about ready to do. It's running down the pant legs. It's warm up here. But you see, I haven't complained. I haven't taken off my coat. I didn't even ask the boys to go turn the air on. Because some of you are comfortable and some of you are sweating. So, serve God without complaining. Well, this ain't working right. That ain't working right. They don't have this out. They don't have this right. No one cut this right. Somebody didn't print this right. Oh, please, don't do that. I'm not saying that happens all the time. Because we're just flesh and we're people. But we need to serve the Lord with gladness. Don't complain. Just get the job done to, with enthusiasm. And remember who you're serving. You're serving Christ. You're serving the Lord Jesus. And thirdly, serve God, not people. You're serving God in reality, not people. Serve God. Paul put it this way in 2 Corinthians 6, 8 when it comes to this thing about people. Because, see, some people get the wrong idea. And, see, they get to thinking they're serving people. And what's going to happen when you're serving people, there are going to be some that will honor you. There will be some that will dishonor you. Hello? There are some that will give a good report of you. There will be some that will slander you. See, that's what happens in serving people. But see, when you're serving God, that's not going to bother you. Because that's who you're serving. Paul says, serve the Lord, you see. He says, by honor and dishonor, evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true. And now you've got to get into the whole content and the context there and get into it. You'll find out that he's talking about serving God. We're not serving people. Indirectly, we're serving each other. Yes, that's what we're talking about. There. Learning today how to practice, put the church to practice in caring and loving one another. And in that, we're serving one another. But in total reality, I'm serving God. 
Whether you approve or not, whether you give me applaud or not, I'm not seeking your applaud. If you dishonor, okay, that's fine. If you speak good about me or you speak a, an evil report, a slander about me, you say, it makes no difference. I'm serving God. And if you'll stay focused on Jesus and on the cross, then some of these things won't bother you. And you won't get all upset and say, that's it. I'm not serving anymore. I'm done. I'm finished. Well, wait a minute. Who are you serving? See, if you're serving people, that's what's going to happen. Because I guarantee you, people will let you down. I guarantee people, some will praise you, and, and the next day they'll, oh my goodness, they'll slice you up one side and down the other. The next day they'll come up and hug and kiss you, and the next day they may spit on you. Because that's just the nature of the beast. But when you're serving Christ, you won't ever have to worry about any of that. He's going to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Man, you have been faithful over a few things. I'm going to make you a ruler over many. Hallelujah. Great is your reward. Man may never give us a reward. Who wants theirs anyway? God's, word is, God's reward will be eternal, everlasting. So don't serve God. Don't serve people. Serve always remembering. Now listen to this. Serve always remembering that you and I are part of the bigger plan that God is working through us, you and I. And what is that plan? For we labor, we are workers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry, that's the field. Ye are God's building. Church, we are laboring with God for the bigger plan. And the bigger plan is to proclamate the gospel around the world, to evangelize the world, and get men and women, boys and girls saved, and to advance the kingdom of God. Not to tear. That's God's big plan. And guess what? We're a part of it. Wow. Who? Because we are the church. Amen. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Let's have an invitation and we'll go home. Praise the Lord. Amen. Those of you that are watching by television right now, we want you to take and, and take a listen to us right now as we offer you an opportunity to come to Christ. You've heard some of the gospel, and you've heard what we've been talking about, and we want to thank you. We want to praise you for that. We thank you for tuning in and staying with us. And we trust you've learned something today. And if you are saved and a believer, and if you've never come to Christ, we invite you today to be born again to be saved, to become a believer in Jesus Christ. And that's by simply putting your faith and trust in the person of Jesus Christ and His finished work on the cross of Calvary, what He did for you. He died for you. He shed His blood for you. He, went to the, he, he was buried for you. And He rose again the third day just for you so you could have eternal life, everlasting life, and all he asks you to do is to confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, call on his name, and receive him. So we're going to do that right now. Let's do that by faith and believing and trusting God for eternal, everlasting life. Pray with us if you're watching and still with us and listening. Dear God, that's right, go ahead. I confess with my mouth, you are the Lord from heaven. I confess that I'm a sinner, God, and... I have sinned against you, and I ask you to forgive me and to cleanse me, and he will, my friend, he will. I do now believe in my heart that Jesus died on the cross just for me. I believe he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And right now, by faith, I do call upon you, Lord. For the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I do receive you into my heart and life right now. Because the Bible says, But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. Here it is. Even to them that believe on his name. So I do now receive you into my heart and life to be my Lord and my Savior, and to take me to heaven someday when I die. And I pray this simple little prayer in faith believing. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. 
Thanks for watching and being with us and tuning in. We'll trust that many of you came to Christ. Write us, call us, email us. It's all there at the end of the program. It's on your screen or into the radio program. We'd love to hear from you. We want to send you a little pamphlet. Now that you're saved, what's next? You can get a copy of any of the messages, a DVD or audio, absolutely free. In the meantime, God bless you. May the grace of God be upon you. May the peace of God rule in your hearts that passes all understanding. And may His countenance shine upon you, for you've come to Christ today. Hallelujah. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. And just remember one thing, God loves you, and so do we. God bless you.